Hey guys, it's Chris here. DJI just released a really cool new product called the DJI Focus Pro. I'm gonna go through what comes in the two different kits that are available. Uh, we're gonna go through the full setup, unboxing, calibrating the lenses, using the LiDAR autofocus, and kind of talk about how this is gonna improve your workflow and make you a better filmmaker. So the DJI Focus Pro will come in two different kits. There's the creator combo and then there's the all-in-one combo. The creator combo is more of like the single user, single shooter setup where um, you control focus and your iris from your left hand or right hand. Um, and, but it still has the full autofocus capabilities with the LiDAR. And the all-in-one combo, what they basically add is the separate focus handset. So that's for like if you have you know larger crews or your production company or maybe you're trying to like level up and start hiring first ACs. It just gives you a lot more creative flexibility um, and you know you can do a full fizz control. So you have focus, iris, and zoom all on the handset, but it also comes with everything that's in the creator combo. So let's dive in uh, to what's in the box. Got a nice carrying case. So this is what a full kit's gonna look like. This has the handset, the three motors, the LiDAR, the hand grip, all your rod mounts, and then also your extra marking rings. Um, again, the creator combo, you will get one motor, basically all of that. And then if you get the all-in-one combo, you basically add in the handset, right? So, and then you order separate motors if you want iris, and then one if you want zoom or vice versa. You can program them to anything you want. So you can see right there, focus, iris, zoom. That's, we'll go over how to set that up later. So this right here is essentially what you're gonna get in the creator combo. You get the hand grip, looks like this. Super cool thing is the hand grip is a battery, right? And that's gonna power the whole system for two and a half hours, your motor and your LiDAR. And that plugs in there and you can always swap those out when they die. You got the touch screen on the back and that's how you're gonna control your LiDAR, do your lens calibrations and everything. And this will actually display the image from the LiDAR camera. So you can do tap to focus, you can do face tracking and vehicle tracking. So the new LiDAR comes with a lot of upgrades as well. It's got 76,800 focusing points, a 70 degree field of view. Uh, and it can focus on things up to 20 meters away. What I'm most excited about is the new focus runner they made. They've gone to a 15 millimeter rod mount, which is standard. So that's gonna work on all your cameras everywhere instead of the old 10 mil rod, which is a little small. You got built-in wireless to the motor, so you don't need a separate unit to receive the signal. It's just you pair right to the motor. There's a single button on the back that you use for a motor pairing and selecting what you're controlling with that motor. You have two USB-C ports to use for daisy chaining. We're gonna go into that a little bit when we build a kit together. And then they give this rod with the kit. So that goes on and it's super solid, not going anywhere. They're also gonna include this base plate that works with the new RS4 and RS4 Pro. This comes with the built-in rod mount right there. So you're gonna put that rod in and that's how you'll mount to your camera or to your RS4. This slides right onto the RS4. Of course, you can use any third-party rod mounts as well since it's now a standard 15 mil. So DJI also includes some mounting hardware. You get your rosette for your Focus Pro grip. You get this that mounts to the camera. It's got a NATO rail on it, so you'll slide that on. And you also have the rod mount there. So you kind of have all your focus stuff on the one side of the camera. You'll mount your LiDAR separately, attach everything with USB-C, and you'll be good to go. So that's what comes in the creator combo. If you get the all-in-one combo, you get this Focus Pro handset as well. It gives you focus control, iris control, and zoom control. You also get four separate marking rings to mark up for your different lenses and those just slide on and off. You have a force feedback uh, focus knob. So when your autofocus is working, this knob will actually spin uh, and mimic what the lens is doing. Uh, there's a couple cool new modes. They have full manual focus, which is like your standard focus pen set. There's uh, autofocus, which is autofocus, and you'll see this knob actually spinning. And then there's AMF mode, so it's auto manual focus. So basically the camera will do its own autofocus, but if the first AC wants to intervene, all they do is grab the knob, and you can basically fight the motor, right? So you can kind of take over and do your own thing, and then if you want to let go, it'll snap back to whatever subject it's tracking. So it's super useful for kind of more creative, on-the-fly adjustments. The handset runs on Sony NPF 550 batteries, these guys, and they just slide in like that. You get a ton of runtime out of those. So DJI has also built this monitor bracket that allows you to mount the DJI uh, Hybrite monitor to the handset. So now you have this sweet all-in-one wireless video, wireless focus, 
LiDAR display, similar to uh, what you had on the Ronin 4D, but now you can use it on any camera. The DJI Focus Pro handset also has adjustable knob tensioning, and that's done digitally. So you hold this trigger down back here, and you can adjust your tension, and you just let go. So right now it's like really easy to move, and you can just hold, turn it to 100, and now you have a lot more resistance. So it's based on kind of personal feel, super easy to adjust, no like tensioning with a screw, it's all done digitally. You also have A, B limits, so you can set like a, a close point, hit A, set a far point, hit B, and you can rack between those two, but also go beyond them. It's just kind of, you'll get this like resistance, but then you can push past it if you need to. So it's like a, a mark suggestion. It's not like limiting where your focus can actually go to. So again, this is what you get in the all-in-one combo, everything you see here. I would recommend getting extra motors to complete the kit so you have a full fizz system, focus iris zoom. Then you'd have everything you see here. In addition to all this, I'd also then get your DJI transmission system, or maybe you already have it, get the monitor bracket, and then they've come up with a really cool way to power everything with this power hub. You have a P-tap input or a power input from the RS4 Pro, and then you have all your different outputs. You have your LiDAR, you have your DJI transmission, and then you have your first focus motor and then you daisy chain from there. So it's all meant to power through this, really easy, really clean cabling. I kind of found out that these holes line up just perfectly. So you can take some long M4 screws, I think they are. You can actually bolt this to the bottom of the DJI transmission. So that's kind of a clean way to keep it all organized. So if you're gonna go for the full complete system, this is kind of what you're looking at with the monitor, the new Focus Pro handset, the DJI transmission system, the creator combo with the hand grip, the focus motor, the new LiDAR, the hub cable, the focus wheels, all your mounting points. This is what you need if you wanna go all in. All right, let's get into the rigging. We're gonna do a small build, a big build, and an even bigger build. I'll show you how it's all done. All right, let's start with our FX3 build. I've got the Sony FX3, a Tilta cage, the Atlas Mercury 42 mil. These are pretty sweet. Got a PL adapter on there. I'm gonna use the DJI rod adapter slide rail to rig the motors to the left side of the camera. I'm gonna start with these two. Gotta grab my tools. PB Swiss, by the way, best Allen keys ever. I'll put the link down below for these. I've had these for like eight years. They're, they're color coded. They've never stripped the best. So we'll screw that down. So I'm gonna slide in the DJI rod, grab a motor. That on, tighten her down. That's gonna be super stiff because you have these two screw points. It's not gonna rotate on you. So you have the motor plugged in. I'm gonna slide the hand grip on. So that's kind of the general setup. Take our LiDAR, which has a cool cold shoe mount. You can also remove that and then it's just a quarter 20 so you could bolt it to an arm or whatever because sometimes you want to get, like say you have a big zoom lens, you want to get this LiDAR out in front because it's so wide that it'll actually start to see the lens and can kind of throw off some of the autofocus tracking. But for this build, we're just going to throw this on like that. Okay, so that's kind of the general accessories. Now we just got to do is cable it up. So the LiDAR cable will plug into the right side port with the little Wi-Fi icon. And the motor cable will plug into either of the USB-Cs on the motor. So we'll power up the hand grip by holding the power button. Wait for that to come up. And that's gonna power up the motor. You can see the light turns on. And then it's also gonna power up the LiDAR. LiDAR, you'll wait for a fan to kick on. And you'll see it start to calibrate. Double tap the button on the focus motor. You'll see it run through its calibration. And now already I'm ready to do manual focusing with the finger wheel right here. So let's add this lens. I'm gonna add lens profile. We have custom one, two, and three. These two lights and you can switch through that with functions. So for C2, I'm gonna add this lens. We'll just call that our zoom lens. Start calibration. It's gonna calibrate our focus. Okay, confirm. So now, the LiDAR is automatically gonna look for faces. So you can see on the movie posters, it's automatically going to the faces. We could use those. Um, we could use this space, or if there's no faces, it'll just show you the box. So let's use that box. I'm gonna move forward because it wants me to go to one meter. 
you'll see that turns orange when you're close. But I really wanna get those numbers down to exactly one meter. So that's perfect there. Now on the camera side, you know, you're calibrating focus. So I gotta focus magnify in. I'm gonna use the finger wheel to get those letters sharp right there, making sure I'm at one meter and I'm gonna tap step one complete. Okay. Okay, so now I'm back a little further. It says, once us to go to four meters, it says we're at five, so I'm gonna walk forwards a little bit. So right there, I'm at four. I'm just moving the camera back ever so slightly to get there. And again, I'm gonna focus magnify on the camera. I'm gonna focus on that tool chest. Right there. Unmagnify, double check my distance, and tap and add it successfully. So we've calibrated our LiDAR. What we also have to make sure and do is go into the installation distance. You'll see this little indicator here. Let's measure with this guy. We're about 85 millimeters. So I'm going from the front of this to the focus plane. I'm just gonna enter 85 into there. Like that. So you wanna make sure to measure that offset for each build you do, because if that's off a little bit, it means that your autofocus is gonna be off by that same amount. So that's super important to do. So let's, uh, let's test the autofocus. And I'm gonna start walking in, and that autofocus is gonna track his face and pull all the way to the close focus of the lens. I'm gonna back out a little quicker. Super impressive. So right now I'm in AMF mode, auto manual focus. If I don't touch the focus wheel, it's basically just autofocus. So I can push in, it's gonna keep them sharp. Gotta make sure not to frame with the LiDAR view. You wanna frame with your actual camera, obviously. Now say I push in tight, but now I wanna rack to the background. I can just take that focus wheel and throw it deep. And if I let go, it'll snap right back to his face. Or, you know, say we're tracking along with him and there's some obstacles that are coming by but I wanna keep it on him. I just apply pressure to that thumb wheel. And even though the focus wants to go somewhere, because I'm holding this wheel, it doesn't let the autofocus change the focus. Say I was on you and I didn't want it to go to Colin. I'm just gonna put my hand on here. I'm gonna go past Colin. It's gonna stay on you, Tate. It's gonna stay on you. And then I can let go and let the autofocus do its thing, right? Or I can hold the wheel. I can put, see Colin and when I let go of the wheel, it'll rack to column. So it just puts so much creative control on your hand uh, with this tiny compact setup. Now, if you wanna go one step further, you add the Focus Pro handset, which we'll get into next. I'm gonna do a little bit of a bigger build now with this Komodo. Um, Rue here is gonna help us out on this one, aren't you? Can I get an Allen key, please? So if we wanted to, we could throw this on again, but in this case, I'm gonna use a cable to power the system instead of the handle battery. It gives a little more flexibility if you're gonna be using the Focus handset with a separate first AC pulling focus. So I'm gonna set this aside for now. I'm gonna use this PTAP cable to power. On 15 mil rods, I'm gonna go one for focus. Now on a lens like this Mercury, where the focus gears are really close together, you can't get uh, two motors on the same side just because the thickness of the motor. So you'll put one on that side and then for iris I'll put one Over here and I can just drop it right down like that Now the power I'm gonna go to the p-tap out of the battery or if there's a p-tap out on the camera I'm gonna run that to either motor I'm gonna go over here to the focus motor plug that in then I'm gonna daisy chain the motors Motor to motor. So I'm gonna use this NATO rod adapter to mount the LiDAR unit onto the camera. So let me attach this first. And this is nice because it lets you slide the LiDAR left and right. Go to my handy bucket of bolts and grab a washer just to space that out a little bit. Or you could just use a shorter screw. So I'm gonna attach that onto there. That's nice and level. So I'm gonna Plug in the last cable from the iris motor here into the LiDAR unit. So that system's powered up, ready to go. Um, now what we can do is turn on our focus handset, hold down the record button. That turns on. And first thing we wanna do 
is calibrate our motors. We can either double tap to calibrate the motor or go into our handset and hit OK. It's going to calibrate both your motors. Or if you have three motors, it's going to calibrate all three. And we're calibrated. So we have focus control and we have our iris control. So iris, you're going to want to mark up on the iris marker here, your stop. So you'll go to, you know, this is normal stuff, but like your F22, don't really have to put that in there. I would put in a five, six, four, two, eight, two, right? You don't need to put in the high irises. It's just mainly like your two, two, eight, four. That's really where you're going to live. So you mark those here with a pen. Same thing with your focus. You would mark up like infinity, et cetera, all the way down to basically map what's on your lens onto the focus handset. And anytime you calibrate your motor, it's gonna line up with these marks. And that's kind of it for this build. You have super compact setup with autofocus and the ability to have focus pulled and iris controlled from your first AC. So they'd be standing at a monitor, you'd have a Teradek or other wireless transmitter on here or even a hard line if you needed to, and they could pull focus and make creative focus decisions like that. Thanks for your help, Rue. Bye. Now, what you don't get if you don't use the DJI monitor is you don't get the cool LiDAR uh, output. Uh, you're just going to be focusing to eye off a monitor, essentially, or using the autofocus. So if you want to add the DJI transmission to this, here's what we got to do. We'll need the monitor, the monitor bracket for the handset, as well as the DJI transmission. And I have these two Tilta gold mount plates on here that's going to make mounting it super easy. We'll also need the hub cable. So that's going to power everything now. So let's try this. Okay, I'm gonna put the DJI transmission on here, just like that. Then I'm gonna put the camera battery on the back. Now to get the battery to transmit power through to the camera, through these plates, first have to turn on the transmission. And then this is where the cable hub comes in. Unplug the PTAP to USB-C. Two cables that go to the transmission, like so. And you have, it's all labeled there, one cable to our focus motor. I'm gonna run that up. And then one cable to the LiDAR, and that's actually a dual cable plugged in. Now I'm just gonna put this somewhere. You can either go M4 screw or there's some quarter 20 holes. I think I could put this right there. So let me grab a screw, get that screw started. You can slot that on, tighten that down. You know, there's a lot of ways to kind of organize all this, but it's just a quick way to show everybody. Let's link the monitor to the transmitter. So to do that, we're gonna go into our menu, connection setting. Uh, we're gonna go control monitor A, link to control monitor. Then on the transmission side, we're gonna hold down on the knob. That's gonna start linking. And we're showing focus motor detected, please calibrate. I'll hit calibrate. That's gonna calibrate our motors. And I did that from the DJI transmission receiver monitor. So it's actually a two-way talk. And there we go, that's calibrated. Now I just gotta get video to the DJI transmission. So I'm gonna go SDI in, and I'm gonna come out of my monitor. All right, we got cables kind of going all over the place. So I'm gonna use some Mondo ties. These are awesome. I'll put the link for these down below. Uh, throw one on the side here. Looks better. So, pretty slick little package. And now I'm gonna bring up the LiDAR information on this screen and we're gonna go through the whole LiDAR calibration using this setup. We're gonna turn on our LiDAR waveform and that's gonna show what this LiDAR sees in like kind of a top-down view. It's super cool, super fun to use this way. Go into your focus menu on the bottom. We're gonna add to C1. This is our 42 mil um, Mercury. Motors are going to calibrate. Make sure that does its whole run there. Okay, so this is kind of a fun game. It's seeing my face, right? You can see that uh, white box on my face. Um, and it's definitely locking onto me and not onto Tate right now. And it's saying make a uh, focus on subject 0.7 meters to 1.3 meters away. Um, make sure your subject is within the focus point, is clear, and tap confirm. So I just need to be between 0.7 right there or 1.3 right here. It doesn't matter, right? As long as wherever I am, I'm sharp. So it's focusing on, or it's the LiDAR is tracking my face. I'm now going to move the focus knob 
to my face and I'm going to hit confirm. Now the long range calibration, I'm going to move between 3.7 and 4.3 meters away. Still tracking me, still tracking me. That's 3.7. Got to lean back, <laughs> lean back. I'm about as far away as I can be. That's 3.8 meters. That's enough. And I'm going to rack to me and I'm going to hit complete and that's it. So now it's in autofocus and it is focusing on my face. Okay, so now I'm in AMF mode, auto manual focus mode, and you can see it's tracking my face. And as I walk in, you'll see the focus knob actually spinning, right? So the focus knob is mimicking what the lens is doing. So I can feel it moving under my hand and I don't like what it's doing. Or I want to do something else like rack deep. I can just overpower it and do that focus rack. And when I let go, it comes right back to my face. It gives you all the creative control you want while also letting you give the autofocus as much control as you want. So that's our medium build. Let's go to our large build. So here's our big build. Uh, I've already kind of pre-rigged a lot of it. I got all three motors on there. This lens, I could fit them all on one side. I mounted my transmitter on a little arm instead of on the battery on the back because this is a 26 volt battery, so that doesn't work. But I powered it via P-tap. I got the hub mounted right there with quarter 20. It's super solid. One thing to note about the DJI hub cable is on the current firmware, it only supports up to one focus motor. Um, they'll fix that in future firmware updates, but for now, if you want to use more than one motor, uh, they recommend using the USB-C to PTAP cable to power the motors and then power the DJI transmission separately. All I gotta do now is mount the LiDAR. So, you know, you could mount it up here. You kind of want to get it as low and as close to the lens as you can. And obviously you don't want to see the map box or anything, or if you have an eyebrow on there or something like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this monitor arm, I'm going to screw it into the front, and then I'm going to screw this into the LiDAR mount. Put the LiDAR on there. And let's see if I can position this. That, that's pretty good. Now, ideally, that you'd get this lower. Um, you know, there may be some room to make some custom bracketry, something cool. Okay, I'm gonna take my NATO rod mount. I'm gonna screw it into the LiDAR module. Again, this is not a sanctioned, approved DJI method, but that's what I'm here for. I'm here to show you guys tricky solutions. All right, so I got the DJI LiDAR mounted to the NATO rod mount. A uh, little washer in there and I got a screw holding that on. So we could either mount this to a rod right here, just like that. You know, that's going to be pretty good. It's probably not going to see that matte box. Or if we wanted to, you could get a little 15 millimeter spud. This is a small rig part. Pop it on there under the arm. Pop that onto the end of the rod on the arm. Drop that down. All right, so we got it mounted to the arm. We got it super close to the map box. All right, we're all calibrated. We got focus, iris, and zoom working nice. Now, what we got to do is get our LiDAR going. Uh, let's set our offset first. Remember, we measured that. We're at perfect 300 millimeters, and that's set, good to go. And you'd run through the same calibration with this using the LiDAR, same thing we did earlier on the medium build. So I won't go over that again. This is just to show you, you can mount the LiDAR in a bunch of different ways, as long as you don't move it between setups. So this is your biggest build. You got full focus, iris, zoom on the handset. You got wireless video. You've got LiDAR, autofocus if you want, or auto manual focus, just some assist, you know? Um, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna incorporate that hand grip again. So for kind of like documentary guys, people doing ENG, you know, if you have a big handheld setup like this, but you still want focus control, let's rig that up. So now I'm gonna incorporate the hand grip again. So say you don't have a first AC, but you still have a big build like this, which I know happens a lot, uh, and you wanna have focus control at your fingertips as well as the autofocus, we're gonna rig that up real quick. It's really easy. I got this bright tangerine grip system here. I have an M5 bolt and a DJI NATO adapter, and I'm gonna screw that on to the rosette. Uh, 
There should be out there some kind of rosette to NATO adapter. That would be kind of the best way to do this, but I haven't found one yet. So I'm gonna just repurpose the parts in this kit, and crank that down. Again, that's an M5 bolt. It's usually metric with these for some reason. Um, and I'm gonna lock that in. So you have your handles like this. Slide that on to the camera. Boom. All right, so let's plug in our cable. So this one's not gonna be long enough to reach the LiDAR just barely. So that's where I'm gonna use this uh, USB-C extension. I'll have the link for this in the description below. Um, you always have to plug the DJI cable in first. So that goes on the hand grip side. It's something about kind of recognizing that it's uh, the right type of cable. And then we'll extend this out back here. Try and keep it as tidy as we can. And we'll plug that into our LiDAR, just like that. Grab one of the Mondo ties, pop that on the top of the camera, just to kind of guide our cabling, like that. And take that cable, this one, oh, just barely doesn't reach. I could switch it to the other side, but I'm just gonna use another extension cable, this guy here. Plug that in. Again, I'm gonna plug it into the hand grip side first and then still going to daisy chain the focus motor to the zoom motor so I can adjust the speed on that knob so you have a really big throw on this lens so you need to be able to use the full amount of that throw um, so now I have a faster speed so if you're a wedding videographer a documentary shooter or whatever you're not lucky enough to have a focus puller this is such a great option it gives you so many tools right at your fingertips all right, that was the DJI Focus Pro video. Make sure to check out the DJI RS4 Pro video as well as the overview video about both systems. This is a great system. I can't wait to see what people do with it. I'm Chris Hare, thanks for watching. Comment down below if you have any questions. Hit the like button and subscribe if you wanna see more stuff like this.